free throw line. Splat! Oh, 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 oh. And welcome into the Max Stern Athletic Center. I'm Yosef Silver alongside Avery Stebner as we are here with the NCSY Summer Pregame Show. NCSY Summer, best summer ever. Now we're getting all set for a tier, tier two semifinal game between the Fuchs and Zerachim Mayhem and the Hafter Hawks. Last night, Fuchs took on Ramaz in a close game of runs, ultimately came out with a 60 to 59 victory, while Hafter took care of Montreal 82 to 60. Avery, who are the key players to look out for tonight? Thank you, Yosef. So for Hafter, it's gonna be big man Peter Drucker. He's been an absolute force throughout this tournament. Just, just really tough to control the paint. And then for Fuchs and Zerachim, it's gonna be electrifying forward Nate Jacobs he's been balling out scoring a ton of points look for those two yeah obviously both teams looking on to the, looking forward to the tier two quarterfinal it's uh, tier two finals excuse me tomorrow what do they got to do to get there yeah so I think it's going to be about coming out with composure playing at your own tempo running your sets running your plays getting Schrucker involved Jacobs involved if you can be composed and relax at the beginning of the game and come out to a good start, you're in a good position. All right, well, we're all set to go here. After this commercial break, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Dance! The, the maturity level's there. They're locked in the whole time, so it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. Arna Cohen didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want, how much better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and then I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our Shabbos this week. Focus, lock in. Let's go. And welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center as I'm Yosef Silver alongside Avery Stebner as we are getting set for this Tier 2 semifinal game between the number 9 seeded Hafter Hawks and the number 13, 14 seeded Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. Starting lineups are sponsored by the Yeshiva University Office of Admissions. As you start your college journey, make sure you visit us online to check out all the great events and opportunities we have for YU students. Starting with the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem that will be in their Road Blues today. Number 0, 5'9 guard Ori Garfinkel. Number 30, freshman guard, 5'10", Moshe Jacobs. Number 34, a six-foot guard, a senior, Nate Jacobs. At forward, number 15, the six-foot sophomore, Alicia Pizem. And at number at guard, number 23, the 5'8", junior, Gavriel Gekovic. And for the Hafter Hawks, we've got starting at guard, the 5'8", the five senior, number, five, number three, Noah Freundlich. Starting at guard, the 5'9 senior, number 11, James Goldschmidt. Starting at guard, starting at guard, the 5'11 senior, number 15, Kevin Levy. Starting at guard, the 6'0 senior, number 34, Sam Siri. And starting at forward center, the 6'1 senior, number 24, Jake Parkoff. So Avery, what are we looking for in this matchup from these teams? Yes, yeah, so I think it's going to be about uh, getting getting your stars the ball early, getting them going. Uh, we saw in the game just before, Yuvo's big man, Yushai Rosenblatt, uh, got going, and Betty Kata did not. And I think you, you should expect to see something similar here if uh, Hafter can get Peter Drucker cooking early on. Uh, and as we mentioned in the pregame show, Nate Jacobs as well. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good game for them. And one thing to look out for also is shooter. No, uh, Noah Freundlich went six for seven from three-point range last night. An absolute sniper. He gets going. Could be a long day for the Mizrahi defense. Yes, definitely. And speaking, 
as we get set for tip off here. And speaking of Nate Jacobs, talking to coach, after coach Joey Honig pregame, he mentioned that, you know, with Jacobs, he'll get his, right? He's, he's a great player, it's very tough to defend. But if they focus on the other players, right, they don't mind if Jacobs gets 40, if Hughes scores 45 as a team. That seems to be their game plan here. As Siri with it, Fornlick in the corner, he'll start from three and continues right where he left off from last night. Yeah, you know, so we just talked about it a couple of moments ago. Fornlick is not the one you want to leave open especially after last night's game. As, Gor as Gorfinkel with it for Fuchs. Nate Jacobs. 15, Alicia Pison for three. No good. And that rebound is corralled by Jake Parkoff. Kevin Levy with it for Hafter. James Goldschmidt wants it. Levy will keep it. Now we'll give it to Goldschmidt. Back to Levy. Siri takes it inside. Tries the tough finish, no good. Blocked by a combination of Gabriel Gekovic and Nate Jacobs. Jacobs with it now. Gives it to his younger brother, Moshe Jacobs. Moshe Jacobs pull up Jay. That goes. Yeah, Moshe Jacobs taking after his brother there. Uh, I, know, I know Nate gets a lot of love, but Moshe Jacobs, a baller in his own right, a really good player, uh, fun to watch. And these two brothers have just been electrified uh, throughout the tournament. Yes, and the younger Jacobs, Moshe Jacobs, as that's a nice find by Jake Parkoff, excuse me, by Sam Sirius, Jake Parkoff puts it in. And Moshe Jacobs, he's only a freshman, so really a lot of room to grow for him. Hopefully he can develop to the player that his brother has become. As he launches one from three, no good rebound Parkoff. Yeah, and it's very rare you see freshmen uh, take, take on this tournament. But Moshe Jacobs, not only here, but also balling out and Again, like you said, something very rare. So it's going to be exciting to see how he develops over the next few years. As that three was no good from Levy. Now Gekovic with the three. That one's also no good. Rebound Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt taking it down for Hafter. Now Siri. He'll look to slow it down. Goldschmidt thought about the three. Jacobs in his face. Siri. Kevin Levy. Levy taking it inside. Out to Fornlick in the corner. Back to Parkov. Baseline to Levy. Out to Goldschmidt. And that's Sam Siri with the three, and he gets that to go. So a pretty solid start here for the Hafter Hawks. Yeah, like we talked about in the pregame show, you gotta stay composed, you gotta move the ball around, play your own tempo. Hafter definitely taking that to heart as you see another steal there. Yes, as that was Alicia Pison coughing it up. Sam Siri. Now it's Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt to the corner for Kevin Levy. Kevin Levy for three. That's no good rebound Jacobs. Jacobs will look to push for Fuchs. Jacobs, he's gonna take him inside. Into the corner for Gorfinkel. Gorfinkel taking him in. Kicks it out to Moshe Jacobs. Moshe Jacobs for three. That's no good rebound Noah Fornlick. Yeah, that's a good shot there by Moshe Jacobs. We know he could hit it. Uh, it's, good. it's a good idea to get, try to get him going early. Uh, I would continue to look for him to, to, get, to get his shots up throughout this game. And James Goldschmidt. As he's harassed by Fuchs defenders. Sam Siri saying, let's calm it down. Goldschmidt in the corner. As that's great defense by Fuchs, stolen by Alicia Pizem. And it's stolen right back by Kevin Levy. Kevin Levy taking it to the basket, kicks it out for Sam Siri. Siri to the corner for Fornluff. Goldschmidt, now Levy in the corner, he'll go for three. And that'll hit the top as it's going to go out of bounds. And. Coach Zach Katz for Fuchs is going to call a timeout as we send it to a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Get ready for five days of some of the best basketball of your life at the second annual year of the Ready to Ball League Camp. Join us in Teaneck, New Jersey at the end of June or in the five towns at the end of August. We're going to have Ryan Terrell be our head trainer for the second straight year alongside other amazing coaches and featured athletes like McDonald's All-American Dylan Harper. Use the promo code SARACHECK25 to get $25 off your registration and I look forward to seeing you this upcoming summer.
And welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center as the Hafter Hawks hold a 8-2 lead over the Fixens Rahi Mayhem. Avery, what have we seen so far? Yeah, we've seen Hafter just uh, very pretty basketball. They've been working the ball around, uh, getting themselves very open shots. And then on Fuchs, we've seen a lot of hero ball from, from Nate Jacobs and his brother. I think they need to look to move the ball around, try to get some better sets, as we see right there. Nice shot. As that three was no good by Kobe Morocco. Rebound, James Goldschmidt, Freundlich, up to Sam Siri. Turns around, finds an open Freundlich. He'll slow it down, gives it up top to Parkoff. Goldschmidt with it now. Goldschmidt with it at the top. Now Freundlich for three, and that's no good. So we know Noah Freundlich is really good from three-point range, but I don't know if that was his shot there. Yeah, I think you saw the first one go, and he got a little, little excited. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, if you're a coach, you're fine with your shooters taking shots like that. I think uh, you got to look at Kobe Bryant's quote. I think it was something like, it's better to be 0 for 30 than 0 for 9. Because if you're 0 for 9, that means you stop shooting. And Tom Ford, I'll continue to hoist it up. And some will go in. As that's a three from Kobe Morocco. So again, no good for Morocco. As Levy looks to push for Hafter. Levy, nice move inside. And the layup is good from Kevin Levy. Yeah, Kevin Levy is such a shifty player. And that's his first bucket of the game, and they're, and they're up 10 2. Really good sign for Hafter early on. And it's very interesting from Fuchs. Right away in the beginning of the game, the first substitution, they basically took off their entire team except for Nate Jacobs. Yeah, and, you know, I get the idea there, right? Like your, your team didn't come out with enough energy. You want to get the bench involved, see if they can provide a spark. But at the same time, as a coach, you don't want to take away the confidence of your starters. If they make mistakes, you want to leave them in, try to work through it. It's a young group of men. And uh, I'd like to see them try to get back in the game and uh, see if they can work through their issues. And speaking of issues, that was Kevin Levy with a little bit of an errant pass. It's going to be Fuchs ball. And speaking of starters, uh, one guy who noticeably doesn't start for Hafter is uh, the big man number 32, Peter Drucker. Yeah, Peter Drucker. Uh, had a bit of injury problems during the season. Missed a lot of the year, but came back for the playoff run and half made it all the way to the semifinals and was able to earn a, uh, a tier one bid for, for Starachek. Drucker still working back from his injuries, so they're trying to get him, uh, trying to keep him healthy and see a nice block there. They want Drucker healthy for the stretch run for, for later parts of this game for the championship, potentially tomorrow. So that may be the reasons why he, he doesn't start on for, uh, for Hafter. That layup was blocked by Pison. Now it's going to be Hafter ball and Sam Siri with a nice cut. Now it's Alicia Pison for, for Fuchs. Pison up to Nate Jacobs. Nate Jacobs for three. No good for Nate Jacobs. So a little bit of a tough shooting start for the Fuchs' Rafi Mayhem. Yeah, and I think one thing you do when you're when you're a shooter and it's not going is maybe take it to the basket, try to get fouled, try to get on the line. Uh, you see front of the off the mark there, but try to get yourself going, maybe by some easier shots, pick and roll action, get to the basket, uh, see if you can take it from there. As Nate Jacobs now for for Fuchs, as that pass is tipped, and I don't know about you, Fuchs maybe looks a little, still a little bit. You know, shaking a little bit. A lot of errant passes. I wonder if Coach Katz may want to call a timeout. Yeah, and I definitely think they need to start running so, some sets offensively, uh, some coordinated sets, try to get uh, some easier shots for their for their shooters. And as you were speaking about him before, Peter Drucker now into the game for Hafter, so we'll see what kind of impact he makes down low. Alicia Pizem. Now Uriel Joel. Joel working on Siri. As they didn't realize how much time was on the shot clock, that's going to be a shot clock violation for Fuchs. Yeah, and again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record here, but it's, uh, it's continuing to be a theme here. Not a very coordinated offense by Fuchs. Um, one thing I would try is maybe try to send some more pressure defensively, try to get some fast break action, push it a little bit. Uh, it seems like this half or half four defense has been really good to start off. As that's a three from Ness Salem that went off the stanchion. I don't think the referees noticed, and that's going to count. A sixth defender doing no favors for Fuchs Mizrahi on that one. Yeah, more like the sixth forward. <laughs> As now it's Nate Jacobs, heavily contested, throws it away to his brother Moshe Jacobs. Now inside to Joel. Joel brings it out. 
Gives it to Gekovic. Gekovic. Now Alicia Paisa. Moshe Jacobs with it, working on Ness Salem. And that's Ariel Joel. And Peter Drucker corrals the rebound. So we spoke about the brothers, Nate Jacobs and Moshe Jacobs, but Ness Salem's brother, at two years ago, Hamey Salem, made a huge impact for Hafter in their run to the, I believe it was the Tier 3 championship. Uh, and Ariel Joel, part of a long line of Joels that have played for the Fuchs and Mayhem. So a lot of uh, family in this, uh, in this game. Yeah, one thing we see in Sarachak is a lot of uh, a lot of family, a lot of brothers. Uh, always excited to see. Kevin Levy, four seconds left on the clock. He's just got to put it up. No good from Kevin Levy. And I think they're going to call a shot clock violation before the end of the quarter. So they're going to put some time back on the clock. Probably be about two and a half seconds. As Fuchs will have a chance to potentially cut the lead down to ten. Depending on how much time they put back on the clock. Yeah, I think for Fuchs here, you just inbound the ball, get to, get to the quarter. It's been a really ugly quarter for Fuchs. It's not over yet, though. I think you just got to get to get to the quarter and talk things over. And we saw last game, Fuchs is a team that's very dependent on momentum. They started out with a 22-3 to run, and Ramaz came back. And then they were up about 15 points towards the end of the game, and Ramaz came back again. So Fuchs really likes to play this kind of style, game of runs. Obviously, not in the sense of, you know, being down 15-2, to two, but... They definitely are familiar with this style, as that's going to be it for the first quarter. After 15, Fuchs 2, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. And welcome back in to the Max Stern Athletic Center. Stay tuned at the end of the second quarter for our Camp Step It Up halftime show, which will be right at the buzzer. So 15 to two hafter lead. Obviously not an ideal start for the Fuchs and Rocky Mayhem to say the least. What can they do in the second quarter? Yeah, and a little disappointing. Fuchs and Rocky has a talent. We know how good they can be, especially the Jacobs duo. But it just seems like they're their energy is flat. It seems like they don't want it more. Uh, they're settling for a lot of, um, let's just say, not such great shots, low percentage looks. Uh, defensively, they're, they're giving up open layups. I think you've got to come out with more, more, more energy here to show that you really want it. As Coach Katz will have most of his starters in. The only substitution, he's got Kobe Morocco, the three-point shooting guard, in place of Gabriel Gekovic. And that's Pison with the shot at the free throw line. No good rebound, Siri. Siri taking it down for Hafter. Now it's Kevin Levy. And James Goldschmidt thought about it. Pump fake, gets it back. No good rebound, Moshe Jacobs. So now Moshe Jacobs taking it down for Fuchs. That's going to be a three for Morocco. And Morocco is 0 of 3 from 3. He's really struggled. Yeah, that tends to happen when you're a team that's as relying on a three ball like Fuchs is. But you're not having a good day if you get very ugly. And speaking of not having a good day from three, Ness Salem doing the exact opposite on the other end for Hafton. And that's going to be a three from Pizem. Again, no good from Fuchs. So they just can't buy a bucket here. Kevin Levy taking it down. Salem's going to go again. No good from Ness Salem. Bit of a heat check there. And that's a poke from Ness Salem. We've said his name a lot. Nate Jacobs for three, and he finally gets one to go for Fuchs. Yeah, and that's a good start for Nate Jacobs. When we see, as a shooter, when you see one shot go in, more usually tend to follow. So let's see if Fuchs can build on this, uh, this, this positive shot there. Half they're going to slow it down here as it's Levy across the Goldschmidt. Now Levy over to Siri, inside to Drucker. Drucker's going to do his work, kicks it out to Goldschmidt, wide open Salem. Salem pull up Jay. No good rebound to Jacobs. Oh 
as Gorfinkel. Now Pizem for three, he'll try again. And now Pizem gets the three, so two threes in a row for Fuchs. Yeah, and one of the positives about being a, a three-point dependent team is when your threes start falling, you can come back a lot quicker. As you see now, it's a ten-point game. It felt like they were nowhere near that just a couple couple minutes ago. Like we said, this is a team of runs. It's now a 6-0 run for Fuchs. As it's Kevin Levy with it. Now same Siri. Levy. Over to Goldschmidt who'll try for three. No good from Goldschmidt. As that hits, hits the stanchion and will go out of bounds. Yeah, and a really good job defensively by, by the Mayhem. Uh, fronting and backing. Drucker, you see a guy in front of him trying to limit the, the entry pass to the post, but also the guy behind him ready for that over over the top ball. Uh, smart defensive strategy as they're looking to key in on Drucker, like we talked about in the pregame. Yeah, and we saw that in their opening an opener uh, from Mimo as they had Nate Weinstock, Weinstock fronting Drucker the whole game with backside help from Josh Kanner. As that pass is going to be a backcourt violation for the for the Mayhem after ball. Jacobs tried to save it, but was unable to. And Goldschmidt's going to inbound for Hafter. And Kevin Levy with it for Hafter. Goldschmidt, Kevin Levy. Trucker inside. Going to work on Gabe Katz. And that was no good. Trucker tried to, trip, tried to tip it, but that's going to be Nate Jacobs taking it the other way. Jacobs for three. No good rebound, Siri. Siri will slow it down. And a lot of people look at that shot and say it's not the best look. Uh, but I'm not one of those people. I truly think when you're when you're a shooter like Nate Jacobs and you're as good as he is, uh, there's rarely such thing as as a bad shot. You just you trust him. You trust that he's he's a big time player and it's going to make big time plays. And I'm not mad about that. Although uh, Coach Katz might disagree. Yeah, definitely a makeable shot from Jacobs. That just didn't fall. Uh, speaking of Jacobs, he's going to get called for a foul over here. That'll be his first. And he's got to be careful. He's the last guy you want to get the foul trouble. He seems to be like the main source of offense for this Peace Missouri hockey team. That's the same in the corner. Morocco tough on him. Good closeout from Sam Lifshitz. Salem drives the lane. And he is going to get called for an offensive foul, drawn by number four, Gabe Katz. Yeah, and uh, Yosef, it seems like the Spooks Mizrahi, not just the team, but the crowd has started to get a little into it. They're seeing their team show some, some energy, some passion. And like you talked about, it's about momentum for this team. So don't look now, but things can get interesting if they can, if they can buy a couple buckets. Yeah, and something interesting to note for this one, uh, Fuchs obviously the out-of-town team, but you can see over here behind the Hafter bench, Pretty empty for Hafter, especially considering they're an in-town team. Um, but that's that's kind of how it goes sometimes. You know, especially some of these teams with tier one expectations. Once they're out, the fans <laughs> the fans aren't into it anymore. Yeah, but that seems to be the theme of the Speaks and Rocky team. You know, talking to Coach Katz before the tournament. You know, we asked him about where do you think he stacks up um, in the rankings with these other teams. He said, uh, we ignore the rankings. We just want the opportunity to play. Uh, we just want to have fun and do our best. You know, even against a, uh, a, the ninth ranked Hathra team here, uh, they just want to have fun. They just want to play, and uh, they'll come no matter what. Give it their all. As it's Nate Jacobs, top of the key, working on Goldschmidt, blows by him. Jumper, no good. And that's a rebound by Sam Siri. Sam Siri flying Jake, flying Goldschmidt. Now Fornlich, he's been a little quiet since the beginning. Siri with it. Kevin Levy. Siri. And that's no good rebound. Jacobs, he'll look to push. Jacobs stops. Jumper. Good from Jacobs. Timeout coach Honig from Hafton. And that will be a full timeout from coach Joey Honig as we will step aside. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center. NCSY Summer is the premier summer trip provider for Jewish teens across the world. With over 20 plus programs spanning the US, Israel, and Europe, NCSY Summer can find something for you. Visit summer.ncsy.org. That's once again, summer.ncsy.org. Yeah, NCSY, an exceptional program. And, you know, I would be remiss uh, if I didn't uh, give this person his due. Uh, we saw that EULA game versus Flatbush. It was an incredible game to watch. Super exciting. And we also saw, I had the privilege to be in the same building as Rabbi Schreiber from EULA. He's been around for a long time. He's truly an exceptional person. Uh, actually, was my father's Rebbe back in the day, so just a lot of props to him, an incredible person, and so exciting to see him here in the Max Center Athletic Center. Yeah, he definitely gets the Eula guys hype, as they will meet Mag and David in the Tier 1 Championship tomorrow. Don't miss that, 2 o'clock right here on Max Live. But meanwhile, we got this Tier 1 semifinal, Hafter up 18-10 to 10 on Fuchs, just under 3 to go, as Nate Jacobs has it for Hafter, uh, for Fuchs, excuse me. Outside to Gorfinkel for 3, and that can't fall. Yeah, one of the worst one of the worst looks as a shooter is that in and out. Um, I would say worse than an air ball. Uh, you almost had it, but not quite there. As the half the defense collapses in on Jacobs, and they're going to get called for a foul. Yeah, a little little ambitious on that one. Uh, they were out for blood on that that steal attempt, but uh, Jacobs had a cool head, prevailed, and was able to take care of the ball. Now. Two and a half left in the quarter. It, is, it has been an uh, interesting game to say the least. Fuchs and Zerachi known for their, their pace and their offense, but they haven't been able to, to really get it together. Uh, I think it's going to be imperative to continue looking to, continue looking to shoot, continue to put up those shots, uh, maybe try to get to the basket. Don't be uh, dissuaded by these misses that you saw on there. Um, continue, continue to have unlimited confidence because that, that's what's gotten you to this point, to the semifinal and it's what will get you to a championship game. As we are now under two minutes, it's Kevin Levy. Fuchs defense coming in on him. And Gabe Katz can't believe he's called for the foul, but I think there was enough contact to warrant it. Yeah, you know, sometimes you, you get a little too into the game. Uh, you don't realize you're, you're slapping at the person's head and not the ball. Uh, I guess both are around, so maybe you, uh, you get a little confused. As you see, uh, Gekovic getting a bit of a standing ovation from the crowd. And Hafter's been really quiet here in the second quarter. Let's see if they can get some points on the board with only three in the second frame. It's Frundlich for three, and that's the guy. If anyone's going to snap Hafter out of a rut, he's electric. Yeah, and I know they just gave up at three, but I still think it's uh, important to give props where props is due to Fuchs Mizrahi. They came out uh, the second corner with a lot more energy and see an offensive rebound there, uh, and they've made it more of a game than it was in the first quarter. As you see Jacobs diving on the floor for it. Able to keep it for his team, Gabe Katz now. No good rebound, Jacobs. Jacobs tried to get it up, no good. As Sam Siri, a little slow to get up for half during the backcourt. Levy now, skies it to the Fuchs bench. And now Ness Salem is going to come into the game for Sam Siri, who looks to be okay. But it's just walking a little slow to the bench. Yeah, a few guys hitting the deck on that one. Uh, you know, good to see them putting it on the line here for uh, a trophy, a big tier two trophy. Uh, let's see how this quarter shapes out. As we are under one minute to go here, as Moshe Jacobs driving the lane. Gets that to go. Nice play, Moshe Jacobs. Kevin Levy bringing it down for Hafter. And just want to remind you that after the buzzer's down, stay tuned. we got to keep it popper standing by our sideline reporter. Um, with Coach Joey Honig for Hafter. As Kevin Levy launches from three, and that's bottoms for Kevin Levy. Yeah, and you'll see if you, you just put two legends in the same sentence, talk about Kiva Poppers, Coach Joey Honig, just, just legends of the Yeshiva uh, basketball. And I don't know about you, but I'm really, really excited to see what they have to cook up at the uh, halftime break. As shot clock turns off, Jacob's going to hold for one here. And that's Pizem for three. And finally, Pizem gets one. He struggled all night, but hopefully he can shake out of it as there's three seconds, two, one, three from Goldschmidt. And that's no good as the half is going to end after 24, Fuchs 15. But don't go anywhere. We got, a, we got Akiba Poppers standing by with Coach Joey Honig. Poppers? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Joey Honig 
on the after half sideline, up by nine at halftime. Coach, you got off to a really quick start, but then got into a really bad dry spell. Tell me about after that. What are you trying to tell your guys in the locker room to avoid going through another one of those and come out with the victory here? Uh, we just got to defend after we score. We seem to be giving it back every single time. Story of our season. Thank you, Coach. Back to you guys in the booth. And thank you, Akiva. Thank you, Coach Honig, for that awesome interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the Camp Stuff It Up halftime show after these messages. No matter how hard we train during the week, no matter how hard we go with basketball, we go on field trips, we go here, we go there, we make sure not to compromise our Jewish identity. At the end of the day, we are Jews and we are Hashem's children and we have to be like that every single day, no matter how busy we are. If you're looking for help in a certain weak point in your religious activities, then you can ask the rabbi. For example, I asked how to lead davening, and now I'm starting to do mincha and shachari, and it's really fun. I don't come to camp just to run three minyanim a day. I come to camp because the kids bring with them an inspiring energy, something that I'm able to draw power from for myself, and ultimately I'm able to share something with them that I love, that I'm passionate about, and having those two things together, it's unstoppable. We're able to both grow in such a way that we leave as different people than when we came. Shabbos at camp is definitely very special. We started off, there's a couple of Shabbat, singing, dancing, all of that. Um, and then something I personally really enjoy is every Shabbos I go to a learning group with one of the counselors, Noah. While being a great coach, he's also very wise and really knows how to just talk to kids and have a serious conversation with them. That is really special to me because if kids choose not to play basketball and they kind of want to use um, the day to rest, there's still opportunities to um, enhance your Jewish life. No question to us is a bad question. We, we make sure all the kids feel comfortable asking us, even about al to like the dime in the morning, saying brachot on food, why do you put on shoes a certain way, why do you tie shoes a certain way? And we just wanna make sure that we can start somewhere with them and go beyond that. I teach a shir on Shabbat that's usually meant to go 30 to 45 minutes, but ends up being three hours long and me and the kids talk about life, we talk about halacha, pirkei avo, lashon hara, and we cover all bases, and it's my most important day of the week. We offer a variety of programming. We have learning groups that appeal to all different age levels, in-text learning, out-of-text learning, mitzvot, philosophy, gemara, chumash, bar mitzvah lessons. We have special programs that go on Rosh Chodesh, Tisha B'Av, Shiva Asr B'Tamuz, even secular holidays like 4th of July. We have all the necessary pieces for kids, regardless of religious background, to live their best Jewish life. And they might even learn a little. My name is Mark Sanford. This is my third time, uh, third summer with Step It Up. First time um, overnight. And throughout the year, I'm a uh, four-time uh, assistant coach, and player development coach, and personnel scout for the Memphis Grizzlies. For me, its existence alone separates itself from the camps that I'm familiar with. The attention to detail, the coaching, and the commitment to developing these young players. What I want to give them is my time. I want to give them uh, an opportunity to ask questions, uh, to have their questions answered. I want them to see or have a glimpse into the dedication and the commitment that is required for results in this sport. If I could have come to step it up as a child, who knows the height to which I could have sent it. And I had great parents, and it's not about that. But it is about um, just certain parts about the sport and life and the bridge that brings them together that I think um, could have been extremely beneficial to me as a young basketball player coming out of Dallas, Texas. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. 
My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Welcome back into the Max Turner Athletic Center as the number nine seeded Hafter Hawks lead the number 14 seed Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem by a score of 24 to 15. And welcome in to our halftime show, which is brought to you by Camp Step It Up. Located in upstate New York with busing provided to and from camp. Camp Step It Up is the most proven Shomer Shabbat basketball camp in the world, featuring 33 current Sarachek players and over 400 past Sarachek players, as well as YU and Stern College stars over the past 12 years. There are programs for boys and girls, grades 4 through 12, including one to seven week options in both the U.S. and Israel. There are three Mignonim per day, learning groups, and a camp rabbi. Past campers include many Yeshiva League MVPs, over 60 college players, and an NBA draft pick. Additionally, some of the players in this game are Camp Step It Up players, including for Hafter, Kevin Levy and Peter Drucker. So the dynamic duo for Hafter both learned how to ball at Camp Step It Up. For more information, email office at campstepitup.com. Call 888-600-0908 or visit timetostepitup.com. That is timetostepitup.com. And now we are going to go down to Akiva Poppers, who is standing courtside with Coach Zach Katz for the Fuchs Rocky Mayhem. Poppers? Thanks. I'm here with Coach Katz on the Fuchs sideline. Coach, start down 18-2, to two, close the half on a 13-6 to six run. What do you need to do? What do you tell your guys in the locker room as to what you need to do in order to continue this run and come out with a victory here? Let's keep shooting the ball. We're going to start off shooting terribly. If shots start to fall, we're a good shooting team. We're going to keep shooting. You're going to keep doing everything, no adjustments? Yeah, we're going to play our game. I think they can play our game. But. Sounds good. Back to you guys in the booth. And thank you, Akiva Poppers. And as always, thank you to Coach Katz and all of the coaches that graciously agree to be interviewed by our wonderful Max Live staff. Uh, before we start the second half, I would just like to give a quick thank you to Dougie's. Uh, for being a proud Max Live sponsor. For the best barbecue and grill in Teaneck, make your way to Dougie's. Go to Dougie'sBBQ.com to order. The link is in the description of this video. And I just want to let everyone know that Dougie's was gracious enough to sponsor our dinner here at Max Live tonight, and it was excellent as always. Yeah, so, uh, Yosef, pardon me. Um, definitely going to enjoy some Dougie's later. Um, now, the million dollar question is this. what What is your favorite food to have at Dougie's. Oh, it's gotta be the poppers, for sure. We obviously know the iconic poppers. They also come in many different ways. You got the steak slammers, poppers with steak inside of it. Uh, you got spicy poppers, but we're not here to talk about poppers. We're here to talk, well. We're here to talk about Akiva poppers. We could talk about Akiva poppers, <laughs> but we're also here to talk about Fuchs Mizrahi and Hafter. And before we just jump back to the game, I would like to note, for those wondering, Akiva Popper's favorite Dougie's food is not, in fact, Popper's. It is the Corn Dogs. So they come highly recommended from Akiva Popper's. As we get started here in the second half, James Goldschmidt with it for Hafter over to Kevin Levy. Back to Goldschmidt. Now it's Sam Siri, Goldschmidt into Levy. Levy takes it inside. Pull up Jay. No good rebound, Jacobs. Yeah, he got a little, he got a little shove on that one. I think he's a little... Uh, upset about that call. Is that his motion, Jacobs, for Fuchs? No good. And it's going to be Sam Siri taking it down for half. So after a little bit shaken up at the end of this first half, he looks to be okay. And they're going to say Kevin Levy stepped out of bounds, and it's going to be Fuchs' ball. So not exactly an ideal start for Hafton here in this 
second, third quarter. Yeah, but if you're Fuchs, I think the time is now to capitalize. You got yourself a couple turnovers as we see a shot almost go there. Uh, but you got to convert those into points at some point. Yeah, Siri taking it down for Fuchs. Now it's Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt. Siri thought it had a lot of time to think about that. Maybe mess up the shot as that was a little short. Ties him to Jacobs. Jacobs. And now it's going to be Ori Garf Gorfinkel. And that's no good, but the rebound is tipped by Pies and it's Jacobs, Moshe Jacobs for three. That's also no good, rebound Peter Drucker. But again, these are good looks for for, for uh, Fuchs and Strauch, pardon me. Uh, they're open, they're moving the ball around well. Now they just gotta fall. As Freund look in the corner, uh-oh. And the bottom again, another bullseye from Noah Freundlich as he is three of four from three. Noah Freundlich making a strong case for the shooter at the tournament. If there was a three-point contest in Sarachek, he would definitely be uh, the betting favorite. As Gorfinkel kind of started moving before he put the ball on the floor, he'll be called for a travel. As a 6.16 to go, Hafter up 27 to 15 on Fuchs. Goldschmidt taking it for Hafter. Jacobs defending him. Now it's Goldschmidt. And that is high, but caught by Sam Siri. Sam Siri takes it inside, tries to get it to Drucker, but that's going to be a foul on number 15, Alicia Pizer. Now, something really important is if you're going to have Drucker in the game, obviously we know how dominant he can be. But if he's in the game, you've got to get him the ball. Because if he's just standing there in the paint, then you're clogging up the middle and you're making it tougher on your, on your team to score. So it's not enough to have a great player like Drucker in the game. You've got to also feed him. Yeah, and that's something we've noticed with Hafter a little bit. Has right on cue, they feed Drucker, and he goes over the top of the defense and gets it to go. Yeah, it seems like every time we make a call, they're always listening. I guess they're watching the, uh, the broadcast. Hey, who wouldn't want to watch this awesome Max Live broadcast? As that's rebounded by Gorfinkel. And, and now that's going to be Kobe Morocco getting, getting called for the travel. Yeah, but uh, an incredible pass there by Ori Gorfinkel. Uh, it was a good dish. I don't know if uh, Simi was expecting it. Maybe that was the reason for the travel. Um, but a great play nevertheless. Drucker inside. Ties him defending. Nice move on the, nice move inside by Drucker, but that's no good rebound Jacobs. Jacobs taking it the other way. Siri comes in to defend. Halts the, halts the fast pace. And now that's Pizum taking it in. Baseline. Now Jacobs for three. And that's no good. Hits the rope on top. Going to be out of bounds. As now Kevin Levy going to take it down for Hafter. And Levy, we, talk, we spoke about Hamie Salem two years ago for Hafter in Tier 3, but Kevin Levy was actually a sophomore guard on that team. He played a really instrumental role in getting them there, as that's a nice inside move by Peter Drucker. Yeah, and uh, a lot of his credit goes to Coach Joey Honig, uh, one of the best to do it uh, ever in the Yeshiva League. Uh, he, he's really just incredible at developing talent. Uh, you see a timeout, it's called. Uh, but more on Joey Honig after the break. As Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap year. Year. And welcome back into the Max Learn Athletic Center as Hafter has a 31-17 lead on the Fuchs' Rock and Man, 4.33 to go. Avery, what have we seen so far in the second half? You live and you die from the three-point line. Uh, that is definitely the motto from Fuchs' Rock We saw it work for some of these games throughout the tournament, um, but not as much today. But again, that is your team's philosophy. I would continue to, to roll a bit shoot so you can't shoot anymore. Uh, speaking of shooting so you can't shoot, no, Freundlich, but that's a miss, although he gets his own rebound. That's going to go to Siri Goldschmidt, around to Levy, Levy for three now. 
in and out from Kevin Levy. As Jacobs walks into a wall of half the defenders, and that's going to be a foul on the side. Yeah, but when you watch the replay, you'll see Jacobs had his teammate, Uri Ur Joel, uh, Joel, Uriel Joel, that is, wide open for a layup. Uh, obviously a great player, Nate Jacobs is, but he's got to look up on these fast breaks because he's missed a lot of teammates. As it's Katz for Fuchs. And that's going to be Katz on the three. No good, so the struggles continue for Fuchs. And it's going to be a foul on Gabe Katz. Yeah, I think you're starting to see a little bit of the frustration uh, when, you, when you miss a shot like that. Um, you're not happy with yourself, so you go and try to make off free with the steal. Uh, but it's never a good idea, and I'm sure his coach will uh, have a word with him. And here comes Hafter. Uh, Froling is wide open in the corner, but he looks to pass it. As that pass is stolen by Jacobs. Jacobs taking it the other way. Nice behind the back move. Pulls up inside and gets it to go. So now only a 12-point lead for Hafter as Fuchs slowly cutting into this lead. Yeah, and your time is now for Fuchs Mizrahi. I would like to see them maybe try to bring a little bit of pressure, uh, try to force Hafter's hands. Don't let them get into their offensive set because they're lethal when they do so. And that's Siri. Inside to Trucker. That's no good from Trucker. Jacobs pulls another board. Jacobs taking it down. He'll pull up for three. No good. Trucker rebound. Levy looking to push for Hafter, although he slows it down. Now Goldschmidt at the wing. There's Moshe Jacobs defending him. Gives it to Frontlock in the corner. Frontlock gets Katz to fly. Now it's Goldschmidt. Gets Katz to fly again. Kicks it to the corner for Siri. Siri, he'll take the three. Bullseye from Sam Siri, as we're going to get an official timeout over here. Um, but it looks like we're back in. There was a little bit of a scoreboard issue. And I believe they're still going to count the three. Um, as, yes, they do count the three. And now it's a 15-point lead for Hafter, 2.48 to go. And speaking of 2.48 to go, the clock hadn't started, so they're going to do that again. Yeah, and it's, a, uh, it, it's an age-old adage, I think it's a saying. Um, it's, always, it's always some uh, something going on with these clocks in the Max Air Athletic Center. Uh, obviously, the clock has always doing its great work. I think I've brought that up a lot throughout this tournament, but really, um, really relevant and I think it's also a good opportunity to shout out our timekeepers, our statisticians, Peter Osen and Eitan Shushan sitting next to me, both doing an incredible job throughout this tournament. Uh, just big props to them. And that's, uh, that's going to be a three from Gabriel Gekovic. So like we were saying, Fuchs living by the three, dying by the three. He lived by the three on that possession. As it's Ness Salem for Hafter. Kevin Levy. Now it's Ness Salem again. Levy and Salem playing catch. Jacobs in Salem's face. Levy's going to take it inside and brings it back out. Now it's Salem open for three. No good from Ness Salem as that rebound is grabbed by Castriel Levine. Gakovic. That's a three from Jacobs. And Jacobs hits the three. And now the lead for Fuchs, uh, for Hafter, cuts down to single digits. And we will excuse our score bug, which is currently on plug. The current score is 34 to 25 with 146 to go. Sam Siri, Kevin Levy for three. And he answers with a three of his own. And it's going to be now Hafter 57, Fu 37, Fuchs 25. 130 to go. Jacobs with it. Levy defending him. Jacobs. Trying to direct traffic. He's going to take it in on Levy. Back out to Levine. Levine takes it inside. Drucker says no thank you. As Siri takes it the other way. And Moshe Jacobs unable to get set for Fuchs on that possession as he will get called for the block. Yeah, and I think you were a little too polite uh, in the name of Yosef Drucker there. I don't think he said no thank you. That was a vicious block by Drucker. Uh, just kind of force in the middle. Uh, but also... A huge shot from Kevin Levy before. We've seen him do it many times throughout his illustrious career. Um, there's a big three there to kind of slow this Fuchs-Mizrahi run. Obviously, you heard the crowd 
get him a little little rowdy, a little excited. Uh, they're going to need to continue to to build on this momentum. If they want to have a chance to win here with 1.15 to go in the third. As Drucker is going to come out of the game for Hafter, maybe looking to, as Coach Katz for Fuchs is going to take a timeout. We'll step away. Don't go anywhere. What happens on a typical day at RTB? You show up and you hear an awesome schmooze for 30 minutes by Rabbi Avi Rosalimsky and Ryan Terrell about the Jewish topic related to basketball. After that, you come into the gym for three hours of skill-focused training. Each hour is 55 minutes of training and then a five-minute break. Within the hour, we focus on one specific area of your game, and over the course of five days, we touch on all areas. To cap off the day, you have one league game, and then you go home after an awesome day at RTB. And welcome back into the Max Turner Athletic Center as Hafter has a 38 to 25 lead on Fuchs. And Sam Siri up for one more shot from the line. Come to Como Pizza for some great pizza, pasta, salads, and even awesome breakfast options. We will be streaming the games in the store, making it a great place to watch the games while you eat. And they sponsored our lunch today. We spoke about Dougie's dinner and Como lunch, both of which we are very thankful for. Yeah, not just the quality food, but also the quality of people at Como's. Um, just the service there, the, the people behind the counter are just some of the best people I know here in the Heights. Big shout out to them as they continue their wonderful work. And big shout out as Nate Jacobs, big three, cut the lead to 11 for Hafter. And just a big shout out to everyone watching in Lake Como. Hope you're enjoying the game. As Goldschmidt tries to answer, no good. Tries to get his own board. Jacobs is going to pick it up. And he'll pick up his dribble. He'll probably get caught. Yeah, and the refs are going to call a travel there on Nate Jacobs as his momentum was moving too quickly when he stopped his dribble. Now, it's really important as the game continues to, to go on, the Hafter doesn't fall into this trap. A lot of times, uh, Fuchs is gonna try to speed them up, and Hafter maybe will play with them, maybe try to go fast as well, hoist up some shots they don't, usually don't take. So look for Joey Honig to tell his team to slow it down and try to control the game in this one. Yep. And Kevin Levy kicks it out to Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt, Levy in the corner. And that's a bullseye from Kevin Levy. Big three from him, extending the lead to 14. 17 on the clock. Jacobs inside. Out to Gorfinkel. Gorfinkel in the corner. Now Jacobs. Jacobs for three. That three is no good from Jacobs. Rebounded by Noah Freundlich, and they're taking it up three seconds to go. Ness Salem inside, and that layup is too strong as they're gonna call a foul on the layup for Salem. So Salem's gonna go to the line for two shots, pretty much with no time left on the clock. As that was a pretty wild sequence. Yeah, uh, Fuchs and Rocky, victim of their own tempo. They went a little too fast, tried putting up a shot with a few seconds left on the, on the clock. I don't know what they were really thinking there. They did not need to take that. And Salem makes them pay with a great take to the basket. Got a foul for two as I believe the refs are going to discuss whether there is any time left on the clock or not. I don't know if we have a replay. I believe there was, but maybe we can take a look. Still waiting to hear from the officials. And goes over to the scorer's table. He's gonna call over both coaches. Yeah, you see the replay. Uh, it's a good take by Salem. Uh, the, the ref is having a chat with Coach Katz and Coach Honig. It's hard to tell from the angle on the replay as to whether there was any time left on the clock. Uh, but Salem's momentum coming down like a train, maybe a little bit too much, was too strong on the layup. Maybe he'll get rewarded, maybe not, as the refs are walking away. And they will put .4 seconds left on the clock, as I believe Ness Salem is going to go to the line for two. Yeah, Ness Salem comes from a, uh, a great basketball family. He talked about his older brother. Uh, actually used to compete against him back in the day. Uh, we, we did get the better of him uh, in the playoff game. Of course, you know, myself, a TABC uh, alumni. Uh, definitely like to talk about my, my glory days. So, Yosef, if you have any uh, questions, you can let me know. Um, but Salem, a great take there and getting himself an opportunity for two points. So, uh, you or know. Maybe I, not. As I think they're going to call that on the side, Salem is going to take a seat. He's bleeding, so they're going to have 
Just the trainer take care of him. He looks to be fine. As the photo for Drucker, that's no good from Hafter. We saw them convert that before, but not that time. As Hafter exits the third quarter with a 42 to 28 lead over Fuchs. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with fourth quarter basketball. And welcome back into the Max Turn Athletic Center as we are just getting ready to start the fourth quarter in this tier two semifinal matchup between the number nine Hafter Hawks and the number 14 Fuchs' Rahi Mayhem. And Hafter leads 42 to 28. What's Fuchs gonna have to do to get to dig out of this 14 point deficit? Yeah, now we know they're gonna continue to launch a uh, plethora of three pointers, but I think on the defensive end, maybe you look to come out in some sort of press try to speed up the game a little bit. You're down 14, you're gonna have to make uh, a bunch of stops. Uh, you also may not have as many possessions as, you, as, you, as you'd hope. So it's definitely uh, pertinent for this Fuchs Mizrahi team to up the tempo, up the pressure, and if they get hot, they can come back in an instant. It's also interesting to see the usage of Peter Jucker for Hafter. He obviously doesn't start for them, but he's definitely one of their biggest players. Um, he happens to be in the lineup right now, but it's interesting how Coach Honig likes, to, Honig likes to use him, given the fact that the lineup just looks so different with him and without him on the floor. As that's a three from Gabe Katz, no good. Ness Salem taking it the other way. So he's back after a little bit of a cut on that last play. As that pass is intercepted by Jacobs, who's going to take it the other way. Jacobs driving on Goldschmidt, and they're going to get called for a reach on the side. I believe that's going to go to Kevin Levy. Yeah, and Coach Honig not happy with that. Eric pass right there. Uh, it's important to, uh, to keep your head in the game. At this point, it might seem like you're up 14, you kind of relax a bit, but whenever you do that, it seems like the other team always comes back. Yeah, it's gonna be Sam Lifshitz to inbound for the mayhem. As I believe coach Kevin Levy is gonna call a 30 second timeout. And we will keep it here for this timeout. Folks, there are a few things in this world that are bigger than basketball, but I need to ask a special favor of every single person watching this game. Go to the description of this YouTube video and click on the OU link. Complete the form and send a letter to President Biden. We need to put pressure on the White House to intervene in the hostage situation and continue the White House's support for Israel. The OU will be delivering 180,000 signed letters to the White House on Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday, which will mark 180 days of captivity for all those still kidnapped in Gaza. Click the link in the description of this video and fill out the form. Literally do it during a timeout. It'll take 30 seconds and your support means a lot. We thank you and we thank you for your continued support. As we're back into this one, Nate Jacobs with it. Nice move on Levy, kicks it out to Morocco in the corner. And Morocco, who struggled to hit earlier in the game, finally gets one to go for Fuchs. Yeah, it's a huge start for Fuchs because they're coming out of, the coming out of the, uh, the break. Uh, now it's time to up the pressure on defense, which seems like they're doing, and a little too ambitious by Sam Lifshitz on that defensive possession. You'll see him get a little bit of a wraparound, get some arm. Um, but it's still a good, good way to come out. Yeah, Sam Lifshitz didn't like the call, but I think it was definitely warranted. As Ness Salem to inbound for Hafter. Uri Gorfungal getting in his face. As Goldschmidt couldn't handle it for Hafter. Although he'll pick it up. Nice quarterback pass to Drucker inside. And Drucker gets it to go. What a wild play. I think that might have been a, a travel. I'm not sure what the rule is for that. Uh, 
Looking like Oda Beckham out there, but couldn't make the, couldn't make the catch. As Jacob's no good from three. Salem taking it the other way for Hafter. As I believe on that play with Goldschmidt, the ref said he never had possession, hence there was no travel. Levy inside to Drucker. Drucker working on Pizem, gets him to fall. Drucker gets the rebound, puts it back up, and he'll get fouled. And that's the danger of Peter Drucker inside. Yeah, Drucker, you see right there, just too powerful. Uh, honestly, not really much you could do there if you're Fuchs Mizraki. You just got to stand your ground, um, keep your hands up, and hope you uh, hope he misses. As Drucker hits the first for Hafter. We'd like to thank Chopsticks for being a proud Max Live sponsor. For the best Chinese food in Teaneck, you've got to go to Chopsticks. Head to ChopsticksUSA.com. That's C-H-O-P-S-T-I-X-U-S-A.com to order online. The link is in the description of this video. They sponsored dinner for us on Thursday night, and we are really appreciative to them. As Drucker missed it, rebound by Jake Parkoff, who gets it inside to Drucker for the layout. Drucker coming alive here in the fourth quarter. That's a scary sight of Fuchs Mizrahi. They really got to figure out a way to uh, keep him contained. A very key couple of minutes coming up for Fuchs Mizrahi. It's 6.24 left. Uh, obviously down 16. It's, it's, it's a lot of points, but still enough time to make a comeback. We saw one earlier by, I believe it was Cooper uh, against Kushner. Uh, as there you see, a three-point attempt. And Morocco, after struggling in the beginning, that's two in a row for Kobe Morocco. And once again, like we said, live by the three, die by the three. Coach Cat said at halftime, they're just going to keep playing their game, and it's worked out a little better for them in this half. As that pass, speaking of Kobe Morocco, that was tipped by Morocco. So something we see often, offense translates to defense, it translates back to the offense. Kobe Morocco having a nice little stretch here. Yeah, Morocco not just getting it done from three-point land, also a lot of energy defensively. That's going to be needed down the stretch here. As Goldschmidt with it now. Over to Joel. Now Kevin Levy. Levy baseline J. That's good from Kevin Levy. Sending the lead to 15. Yeah, we haven't heard from Kevin Levy in a while, but it seems like every time he gets the ball. Another three from Morocco. No good. Levy looked to push the other way. As that's Ness Salem inside. And Pison's going to get called for the foul. Sending Salem to the line. Yeah, but right there, again, you see Kevin Levy taking it down the court. A really nice pass. Uh, savvy veteran point guard. And like I was saying, every time Kevin Levy has a ball, it feels like he's making the right play. It feels like he is uh, getting his team on the board, stopping a Fuchs Mizrahi run. Uh, and no different right there as Ness Salem looks to make it a 17-point game. And for Kevin Levy, as you mentioned before, it's his third year on the varsity team. He came in as a sophomore. He was actually pretty much their number two, along with Ness Salem's brother, Hamie Salem, as they had an impressive run in Tier 3 back when it was 2014, two, just two years ago. Uh, and Salem extends the half-year lead. It's going to be 17 points now for Hafter. As Jacobs puts up the three, and that's good from Nate Jacobs, reminding everyone how good of a shooter he is. And Coach Katz is going to call timeout and regroup the defense. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back in as Hafter with a 14-point lead over Fuchs, with just about five and a half to go. Goldschmidt working on Moshe Jacobs outside Kevin Levy. 
Levy with Kobe Morocco in his face. Blows right by him. Goldschmidt. Now for Ness Salem. Salem over to Levy. And Levy's excuse. And Levy is going to get fouled by number 30, Moshe Jacobs. Yeah, and sometimes when you play against a, a shifty point guard like Levy, you can't hang with him. You just stick your arm out, hope you get the ball, but uh right there got all all of Kevin Levy's shoulder. Uh, and third foul here for uh, Moshe Jacobs, so he's got to be careful. Yeah, 5'11 to go. Definitely not a player that you want in foul trouble if you're Fuchs, as that is going to be Fuchs' fifth foul of the quarter, which means that Hafter will be in the bonus the rest of the way. As Levy hits the first, and with the new rules in high school, used to be that the two halves were counted together, and seven was one and one, and 10 was two shots, like in college. Now it's like the NBA, where five and one quarter, it's gonna put him at the line for two. Yeah, and unpopular opinion, but I, I, I'm not really with that rule change. I think the one and one adds a lot of uh, comeback opportunities and unpredictability to these games, um, as opposed to the two shots, but I don't make the rules, so whatever. And it looked like a uh, travel there by guard Gabe Katz. Got a little too excited driving in, as you'll see on the, the replay. It was the right idea. I like the fact that he's trying to get inside to the paint, uh, maybe switch it up, but could have convert right there. Yeah, going on that point, I have to agree with you about I like, I'm a bigger fan of the 7 and 10. The 1 and 1 adds an extra element of strategy into this. As Goldschmidt's going to kick out for Salem, who got slapped in the face, but no call. And Drucker's going to get fouled inside. Yeah, and uh, again, I know we're talking a lot about it, but on the, the free throw rule change, uh, it's a bit personal for me. I don't know if uh, many of you are old enough, but my older brother, Jack Stepner, fresh basketball legend, was playing in a semifinal game against DRS. He was down, I think I think it was five, with tw uh, 20 seconds left, and he had a three-pointer and cut the lead down to two. And then they fouled DRS with like 10 seconds left or whatever it was. And normally with that two shots, DRS has a better opportunity to make it a, uh, a two possession game, but it was the one on one, he missed the shot. Frisch had the opportunity to tie it. My brother hit a game tying three to send it into overtime and ended up winning. As that three is no good by Nate Jacobs, rebound Aton Levy. So uh, again, just a big shout out Jack Stepner if you're watching from the Holy Land. Uh, an incredible player and an incredible person as well. As that pass is tipped by Moshe Jacobs, Levy gets hit, no call. Levy <laughs> getting assaulted when he touches the ball. Now Goldschmidt taking it inside. As Parkoff couldn't handle the pass, and it's going to be Fuchs basketball. Yeah, and a good job right there by Fuchs Mizrahi, forcing a little bit of uh, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of uh, chaos, if you will. as maybe another clock issue. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but we'll restart. And I apologize, I had the opportunity to pull off a great a great line right there. Instead of saying chaos, I should have said there is a bit of mayhem being forced by <laughs> the Fuchs Mizrahi mayhem, uh, but I'll get him next time. As it's gonna take a little bit of mayhem for them to come back in, as Nate Jacobs couldn't get the put back. And now it's gonna be half to take into town as we pass the four minute mark. Sam Siri, inside to Parkoff. Siri, Goldschmidt, Levy, nice catch. Noah Freundlich, back up to Levy. Levy's gonna slow it down. 14 on the shot clock, Goldschmidt, Levy. Now Goldschmidt with seven. Full court pass to Siri. Siri now Levy, wide open Goldschmidt. Pump fake to Moshe Jacobs, but he had to get that up there as he's gonna get called for a shot clock violation. Yeah, it was a good possession right there by, uh, by Hatteras. Looks like the clock was, was running a bit. Uh, about five seconds were uh, taken off, so I guess they'll add it back on. But uh, really good possession by Hatteras right there. Obviously, the shot clock violation was forced, but up 17, you're not necessarily looking to score. You're looking to uh, take off some time and just get out of here with the win and look to play another day. As Hafter goes into some kind of a press over here on the inbound, and it's going to be Moshe Jacobs. 
Working on Kevin Levy. Out to Natana, Nate Jacobs, Nate for three. No good rebound, Alicia Pison. Strong offensive rebound by him. And that's Natana Jacobs, thought he had it. Now Pison for three. No good, rebound Sam Siri, who's gonna take it the other way. Siri looking to push, loses it. Gets it on the floor. And I believe that's gonna be a jump ball. I don't think they're gonna grant Coach Honig the timeout. And the possession is gonna stay with Hafter off the jump ball. Yeah, and I just wanna say one thing here. Uh, I know maybe this game not going the way Fuchs, Mizraki hoped, but still a noteworthy tournament for them as they had a lot of success. Uh, definitely building an incredible program. Uh, we saw them here last year. Uh, as maybe I spoke too soon and the three goes. Uh, just a lot of credit to Coach Zach Katz and what he's been able to build. Fuchs Mizraki, definitely a program that is on the come up and we're very excited to see what they do in the future. But I guess maybe not done yet. Noah Freundlich wide open three. That's no good, he gets his own board. Jake Parkoff, Sam Siri now. And now it's James Goldschmidt. And that's something you cannot do if you're Fuchs. Right, if you're trying to get back into this game, you cannot allow second chance opportunities for the Hawks. As is that foul's gonna be called on Goldschmidt after he kinda got hacked to pop the ball out in the first place. Yeah, it seems like every time we, uh, we try to make a call, we're, we're wrong, you know. Uh, talking about maybe the game being over and Fuchs hits a three. Talk about Fuchs making a mistake, then they got a steal. Uh, so I guess we'll continue to uh, to bat him out Fuchs so that they can come back. And it's Pison thought about the three. He's going to drive baseline instead. Motion Jacobs in the corner. He'll put up the three. That's no good. Fight for the ball. Where the ref's going to call. Waiting a signal, but I believe it's going to remain Fuchs ball. Yeah, I think whether that's a foul or that's a jump ball, uh, I think it's going to remain Fuchs. Uh, and a lot of credit to, uh, to Nate Jacobs. It looks like it was the one who hit the deck there. Uh, even down 14 with two minutes left. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of credit to him for uh, going after that one. And Nate Jacobs, a really special player. Uh, not only did he average 28 points, but he also averaged 15 assists this season for the Mayhem. So a player that can contribute in multiple ways. He also, we were talking about how Kevin Levy was a big contributor for Hafter, as that's gonna be a foul on the side. We're talking about how Kevin Levy was a big contributor for Hafter even two years ago in, Sar in two years ago, Sarachek. Uh, but Nate Jacobs, as a sophomore in that tournament as well, was top five in points per game. So maybe then flashing a little bit of what he's showing us now. Wonder if his brother maybe can take the same trajectory. You know, help bring this Fuchs team back here, maybe even further in the tournament. As that's a wide open three from Pizem, and that's going to be short. And with 147 to go, down 14, maybe too little too late for the mayhem. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Kevin Levy and Nate Jacobs and how great they've been. And that's one of the, one of the privileges of uh, the Sarachek tournament is you get to see these, these legends who've had such great careers, um, you know, take the core for the final times of their career and give us some, some memories that we can latch on to. Kevin Levy and Nate Jacobs definitely uh, class players and class X. As it's Park off. Now Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt to Levy. Kevin Levy. As Coach Joey Honig is going to call a timeout for Hafter. It's 121 to go. 54 to 40. Hafter lead. We're going to step away.
And welcome back into the Max Turner Athletic Center as James Goldschmidt with it for Hafter. Peter Drucker. And they're going to, Fuchs is playing really aggressive here. Down 14 with just about a minute to go. Ness Salem, a deep three for James Goldschmidt, who was fighting the shot clock. And that's no good. As the clock continues to run, I would assume they're going to put about two or three seconds back on the clock. Or maybe not. As Fuchs is going to roll it down. Nate Jacobs with it for Fuchs. Goldschmidt right on him. Now it's Gabe Katz. Katz inside. It's a nice layup from Gabe Katz. Cutting the lead to 12. Peter Drucker with it for Hafter. Sam Siri. Forward to Salem. Salem inside to Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt. Nice layup. Avoiding the block from Gabe Katz. As Moshe Jacobs for, ha for Fuchs. Puts it up for three. No good. Tip ball. Sam Siri with it. Excuse me. Jake Parkoff with it for Hafter. As that's fo thrown forward to Ness Salem. Tries to get it to go. Can't. And Peter Drucker's going to take it out for Hafter. He'll get fouled, but that's too little, too late. 19.4 seconds to go. If Hafter up 14 on Fuchs. Yeah, we talked about uh, this three point ball for, for Fuchs being the, uh, the determinant on how the game goes. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out great today, but. Um, Still, uh, like we said before, a lot to look forward to for Fuchs Mizrahi. It's an incredible run here at Sarachek, and they'll have a tier two third place game coming up tomorrow. As Nate Jacobs is going to stay in, in the game over here for Fuchs, as he'll see with him being a senior, this will probably be his last meaningful minutes for the mayhem. We would like to thank all of our sponsors. If you would like to become a Max Live sponsor, Email us at yumaxlive.com, uh, excuse me, yumaxlive at gmail.com, or DM us on Instagram or Twitter. As it's going to be Gabe Katz taking it down for Fuchs. He'll put it up for three. No good from Katz. Salem with it. And the Hafter Hawks will dribble this one out after a resounding win. And as the final horn sounds, it is going to be a Hafter 57. Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem 42 as Hafter will move into the Tier 2 Finals tomorrow versus the winner of Valley Torah and DRS. Don't go anywhere. We have the Yachad Post Game Show coming right up. We've come a long way, haven't we? Chalk it up to maturity over time. Because this time, we will not be silent. This time, we will stand strong and proud. This time, we will hold our ground. This time, they'll never stop me from being me. Clipped, show who you are. And welcome into the Yachad post game show where we are here post game of the Hafter Hawks, 57 to 42 defeat of the Fuchs Rocky Mayhem. Now we got Akiva Popper standing by with stars of the game, Peter Drucker, Kevin Levy, and Sam Siri. Akiva, take it away. Thanks, Yosef. I'm joined here, Sam Siri, Kevin Levy, and Peter Drucker, a victory over Fuchs Mizrahi to go to the tier two championship game. Boys, I'm curious, your thought process, you know, obviously you came into the tournament wanting to win tier one, fell on Thursday and had to regroup and go after tier two. What did coach say in the locker room after the Thursday game? Um, yeah, so it's definitely not what we were looking for going into game one. Um, the outcome wasn't what we expected, but coach told us basically keep our heads up, you know. We're still, uh, we don't want to sell, sell ourselves short, you know, tier two championship, let's go for it, you know. And Kevin and Peter, you know, one of you such a big presence inside, really dominating the boards. Kevin always scoring all the points. I'm curious, 
How do you kind of feed off each other? You know, no one wants to, oh, I have to get my points. You know, obviously, that's not the right approach. How do you balance the fact that each of you can score in such different ways, impact the game in such different ways? How do you make sure you're playing so well as a team? I, mean, I think it's great. I think our play styles match up perfectly, whether it's me driving, pick and roll with either, even whenever I miss, he's always going to clean it up. And then you have the same shooters in the corner. So I think our play style matches up perfectly. We don't need to worry about who's taking the shots. We know we run our offense, we're going to get go ups. I think um, with me and Kevin picking rolls, we got, if I got a set of pick for him, and I got a roll, and I'm just going to kick it out. It's just an easy, uh, easy play for both of us and our whole team. Any shout outs to anyone watching at home? David Levy, my dad, and I don't know who else is watching, but here's that Boris, best guy. Shout out to Boris. All right, enjoy the next game. See you guys tomorrow. Back. And thank you, Akiva. Before we let you guys go here, we'd just like to thank everyone who made this broadcast possible. Executive Director Eitan Schreier, Executive Producer Zevi Panzer, Director Tavita Raviv, Associate Producer Yosef Silver, <laughs> Assistant Director David Sampson, Camera Operators, uh, Gabi Asper, Yosef Fluth, Donnie Horowitz, Tech Ops, Anna Wasserman, Stats by Peter Osen, and Eitan Shushan, and for Avery Ste for our sideline reporter, Kiva Poppers, color commentator, Avery Stepner, I'm Yosef Silver. Go, don't go anywhere. We will be right back with the Valley Torah and DRS other semifinal, where Hafter will face the winner of that game. And click the link in the description to watch that one. And we will be right back. <laughs>